To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Next, we need to use a hair dryer or a heat gun to apply heat to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the plastic back plate. At this point, there are 15 Phillips screws which need to be removed. The top plastic cover can now be removed. There are some antenna lines drawn on this plastic cover, which are the light gray color lines. The NFC antenna is also located on this plastic cover. Here's a look at the other side. The battery cable can now be disconnected. The graphite film and copper tape covering the front shields can also be peeled off. We can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. The protective tape covering the front facing camera connector needs to be peeled off so we can disconnect and remove that. Here's a better look at the 12 megapixel front facing camera. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board that needs to be removed. The main board is now free and can be lifted up and removed. There's a primary 50 megapixel camera and a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens. The main camera has OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a secondary microphone located on the top corner. The LED flash is located here. And there's some thermal paste on these chips. The main board itself is a multi-layer board design, so there's multiple layers to this board. Taking a look at the back side of the board, we can see more copper tape on the back shields, as well as a cutout where the processor is and some thermal paste on top of the processor and some behind the camera. Now the Zenfone 9 has an impressive cooling system. There's a cutout in the copper tape right where the processor is, and there's a good amount of thermal paste between the processor and the vapor chamber. So basically the processor has more of a direct contact with the vapor chamber via the thermal paste. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see some more thermal paste on these chips. Here's a better look at the RAM which is seated on top of the processor with the thermal paste removed. The bottom speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. There are some more antenna lines drawn on this plastic cover for the speaker assembly. There are also those little white foam balls which make the speaker sound larger and louder than it actually is. There's a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the opening of the speaker. The subboard can be lifted up and removed. These flex cables connecting the subboard to the main board can be disconnected by just popping them off. And the primary microphone is located underneath the shield. The SIM reader is located on the back of the subboard. At this point, the charger port can be peeled off and removed. Here's a better look at the charger port. And there's a red rubber gasket around the charger port itself. There's also a white liquid damage indicator sticker on top of the charger port. The battery is enclosed in an adhesive pouch, which can be peeled up around the edges to help you pull up and pry out the battery. Here's a better look at the 4,300 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery has been removed, we can see the flex cable for the screen which is right up to an opening in the mid frame. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to take the back plate off, 
Remove the screws on the top cover and the cover itself. Disconnect the battery cable and the rest of the flex cables on the motherboard. Lift back those flex cables so you can pry the battery off, giving you access to the screen cable. At that point, you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. Pry your old screen off. Apply new adhesive. Reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back through the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. We can also see this copper vapor chamber, which runs underneath the battery, as well as the motherboard. And there's a good amount of thermal paste to help transfer heat away from the processor to the vapor chamber. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom and it's held down with some adhesive. There's another liquid damage indicator sticker underneath the sim reader. And there are rubber gaskets and mesh filters over the microphone openings on the frame. The flex cable for the volume key is located on this side and is held down with some adhesive. So if you need to replace that, you have to gently pry it off and pull it out of the socket in the frame. This is the flex cable for the power button and fingerprint reader. If you needed to replace that, you would have to lift up the screen cable and gently pry that cable off. Then there will be two Phillips screws on this metal plate you'd have to remove, releasing that metal plate, giving you access to removing that flex cable and the fingerprint reader. Here's a better look at it with the screws removed and the metal bracket laid back. There's a connector for the flex cable for the fingerprint reader, as well as the clicker for the power button. And there's a red rubber gasket around the opening of the frame. The flex cable for the proximity sensor is routed through an opening in the midframe, so if you had to replace that, you would actually have to pry the screen off as well. The earpiece speaker is located on top and that's also held down with some adhesive and the flex cable for that is here. And the headphone jack is located right next to that. And that can be removed by putting a tool underneath it, lifting it up and popping it out. There are two more liquid damage indicator stickers on this frame. One located next to the headphone jack and one by the volume keys. For the Once all the screws are back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.